Anthem. And Pyatt looking to do a bit of rocking and rolling in there tonight. Real likeable fella, Chris Pyatt. He's got where he is the hard way. And now he wants the big names. That big fight round the corner for him. Nigel Benn also mentioned as a possibility. But he's got to get this one out of the way first. Your big fight commentators, as always, Jim Watts and Reg Gottridge. First of all, your MC, and that's Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the big fight live on ITV, coming from Brentwood's International Hall and promoted by Barry Hearn for Matchroom Boxing, sponsored by the Thompson Directory. And tonight's main event is a middleweight contest with a match made by Frank Turner of London at 11 stone 6 pound over 12 rounds each of three minutes duration for the WBO Middleweight Championship of the World. Your judges at ringside, Albert Wilensky of Miami, James Condon of New Jersey, and Ishmael Fernandez of Puerto Rico. Your WBO supervisor in charge, John Montano of Arizona, your timekeeper, Danny Peacock of Surrey. And when the bell rings and the action begins, the man in charge at the four corner of ring is Bobby Gonzalez of Texas. Presenting and introducing the boxers, first, in the red corner, with the white, red and black shorts, he comes from South Africa with a professional record of 15 wins from 18 contests, 10 inside the distance, and weighing in at 11 stone, four and a half pound, he's the reigning South African middleweight champion and challenger for the title, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Cameron. And his opponent in the blue corner with the navy shorts. He comes from Leicester in England with a great record of 41 wins from 44 contests, 31 inside the distance, and weighing in at 11 stone, five and a quarter pounds. Will you welcome, please, the reigning WBO middleweight champion of the world, Chris Tyson Tyre. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 three-minute rounds, I thank you all. Well, the thing about this now, we're not sure what the South Africans got. It's the first time he's fought outside of South Africa. And that's the referee there, Bobby Gonzalez from Texas, doing his ninth World Championship fight. And as he came into the ring there, Chris Pardo, well, I tell you, he looked like back in his amateur days, he was full of himself, looking in trim shape, new kit, the whole thing, it's, it's really Take interesting it becoming champion and I thought he definitely deserved it against Sambu Kalambay and Lester, he fought Kalambay one of the best fighters around and he fought really well that night. So now let's see what 24-year-old uh, Mark Cameron's got. Comes out of Cape Town, he's a gymnasium instructor. Well, the word from South Africa, Germany magazine uh, judge over there is very good, Bert Blue, it was telling me that this was always fit, always giving you a good rumble, but I, I said, well, I think, you know, on record, surely 44 fights Pyatt uh, has got to be so much advanced. But he said, no, you know, an upset's always possible with a tough guy like him. Well, the fact that he's taller than Pyatt, a uh, longer reach, and he looks at a fairly controlled boxer. He hasn't taken any chances uh, in the first minute here, hasn't done anything reckless. Keeps his elbows down, his chin down, and his hands up. He's just trying to measure the range with his left hand. So he looks a fairly careful type. So if he's careful, strong, and fit, then he certainly he can give Pyatt some problems. But uh, you have to think Pyatt is uh, a better all-round fighter. That left jab uh, of Cameron's, it uh, keeps poking it out, and it's difficult to get, it's one of those jabs difficult to get past. Nice little right hand from Cameron to there. Bart tended to adopt different tactics when he went up from light middleweight, 11 stone to present weight tonight, line 11, five and a quarter. 
said it's uh, maybe a bit more difficult to knock people over and I've got to change my work. And it, he's done that quite successfully, really. Very explosive puncher early on, particularly in his amateur days. Pyatt whips his punches from body up to head very well, puts them together well. He doesn't want to stand off. I know it's only the first round here, so he's only having a look at Cameron. But he doesn't want to spend too long in this fight. They're standing off. This fellow looks very well controlled and uh, a decent left jab. Fights out of a very wide stance, the South African. Anchors himself a bit to the canvas. As you say, Parts having a bit of a look at him, Jim. It's, uh, I think he didn't know what to expect. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. oh yes. It's a foot. He hit him what looked a light punch. And suddenly he let one go there right out of the blue. Well, I was just saying he was an explosive puncher. Now the bell has rescued him there. No, he's counted him out in the act of rising. And quite rightly, actually. The bell has sounded. I thought he'd rescued him there and that he considered him up, but no, right on the bell there, quite right, the referee can carry on counting to ignore the bell. Well, it's got to be a shock like that because he didn't look a bad fighter, Jim. Yeah. He's been stopped on pre twice on previous occasions, obviously. But, I mean, he just tickled him with the first right hand and then immediately afterwards yeah. the big one went in. Actually, the first right hand was a, bit, a little bit more than a tickle. It could have stunned him slightly, but the second one was certainly the finisher. Yeah, a couple of good punches. The little right hand just just to kind of set him up. You know, caught him bang on the chin the first one, a decent little sharp shot, bang. That was a decent little shot. Oh, you yes. can see the effect on his legs. Bit better Saw the chance, people. bang, and it went. But I have to say, Reg, most referees, after the bell has rung, if the boxer reaches his feet, most referees will let it continue. I wonder if the referee didn't hear the bell. Yeah, I okay. think... OK, Cameron was shaking by that one, down with a real good right hand, obviously badly hurt. When he got to his feet, he was shaking, but it's possible at this point the referee didn't hear the bell. Because the fact that Cameron got up of his own accord, and, and it was the end of the round, I mean, the, ten, you know, the full minute between rounds, he could have recovered. So, wonderful punch that knocked him over, but I'm surprised that the referee stepped in. I wonder if he didn't hear the bell. Here it comes again. Nice little right hand to set him up. Steps in with it, bang, bang on the chin. That was a shaker. Yeah, it wasn't a tickle. I take and that. Then the finisher, yep. Well, two, it was two a, good shots. It was a tickle by part standards. I'll get out of trouble and say that. Well, he really, he really looking forward now to defending the game and getting hold of some good money. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first round, by a count of the winner, Rick Fire. And ladies and gentlemen, I know you want to show your sympathetic appreciation for the loser, Mark Cameron, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. But once again, tonight belongs to the champion, the WBO middleweight champion well, of the world, Chris Pryor, ladies and gentlemen. Can't uh, blame him. The doctor had a good look at him and uh, he's on his way back. Dressing room well, and South Africa. One more One more to go. Well, Chris, that was all a bit quick. Um, you looked as if you were sizing him up, and then a terrific punch. Yeah, uh, first of all, can I just say hello to my two boys, Todd and Sonny, my mate, Fatty. Um, yeah, I mean, um, first round, I was just taking it easy, and, uh, you know, I, I threw one over the top, and, uh, you know, it happened to catch him on the chin. Let's, let's just have a look at that uh, in just a moment, but you're getting back to sort of your early days when you used to knock them out because you've taken a while adjusting to middleweight moving up from light middleweight yeah I mean I'm I'm older and wise and I think you know I tended to uh, you know a couple of years ago I tended to look for the punch too much and when you when you look for the punch it never comes but now I'm, I'm boxing a lot more relaxed and uh, you know the shots are just coming Yes, so we, we didn't get a chance really to assess your opponent so we don't really know what you're up against no, um, you know like I say I think we was both just having a look at Look at each other in the in the first round, and uh, you know, you know, I happened to like connect one on the chin, and you know, it was all over. So, all right. well, you got plenty of energy left. So talk about this. Um, yeah, it seemed to catch him on the side of the head. Really, uh, you know, it weren't really on the chin. It was on the on the s s side of the head. It must have been right. At, well, it was right at the end of the round. So, 
No, it's just one of those things that can happen to anybody. Actually, it wasn't such a big punch as I thought it was at the time. I'm su surprised he got knocked out on that. I don't know. I think it's a fairly big punch. Yeah, yeah all right. There you go. Yeah, you I wouldn't like to take one. No, no, I wouldn't actually, Chris. So <laughs> don't demonstrate now. And again. I think I, yeah. I half dazed him with a shot yeah. before that. I think you that's know? the one that did he, the damage, his, don't you? His legs seemed to wobble, seemed to wobble, right. and I just sort of moved in and threw another one over the top. I think I think it was that first one, don't you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Now um, there's a chap called Steve Collins that you'll be meeting next time round. Yes. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Steve is. Uh, very capable fighter, he's number one challenger. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward, he's well known worldwide, so I'm looking forward to getting in there with somebody who's, uh, who's established and can give me some recognition. Well, we'll be looking at him next on this programme, so you'll be able to relax when you change and have a look and see what his form is like tonight. But let's talk to Barry Hearn. Um, we're not going to talk about Steve Collins' fight tonight because we're looking forward to seeing that. Sure. But is that going to be a very exciting fight for you? Well, I think it's a natural fight. You know, Steve Collins has only been beaten by world-class fighters. Mike McCallum, Reggie Johnson, Sambu Kalambay. Two world titles and a European title. He's the USBA champion, the Pentacontinental champion. Of course, he's the number one challenger. I think it's the type of fight that boxing fans are looking for all the time. You know, the champion against the number one mandatory challenger. And that's going to be a hell of a tough fight. I mean, Pyre, I have to say, he's hitting now as an established middleweight. You know, he's got a lot of power and he's going to give Collins a lot of trouble. But Collins is a very capable fighter. Did you I think that was an easy touch for him tonight? I thought it was easier than I expected it to be. Obviously, the young Cameron had come with a good reputation. You know, he's a bit of a banger in South Africa. One has climbed off the floor a few times to win. Came on the back of a good win against Gerhard Botts, who we saw in England go seven rounds with Collins. Cameron stopped him, but I think, as you said, Gary, quite rightly, that first punch, the first right hand over the top, seemed to take everything out of his legs. The second one, high up the hill, obviously dis disorientated him, and that was it. Eight, nine, ten, and Pyatt's back to his punching best. Actually, Pyatt's doing well with his career, isn't he? Because it's towards the end of it, and he seems to... Well, I don't know if he's towards the end of it. You know, if you're judging by other good middleweights, like Roberto Duran, he's 44, and Pyatt's a fledgling at 29. But I think he's coming to his peak now, and I think we can look forward to a few explosive fights with world-class middleweights from now onwards.